Well, hello everyone, how are you today? It's Sharon here from I Restore Stuff. I run a blog, a furniture painting blog, but I'm here today as one of Essential Stencils ambassadors ready for a live DIY. Now, I am, let's go to the live here and see if I can see comments coming in as you jump on. Let me know where you're tuning in from, where you're watching from. If you are watching the live, the replay of the live, comment the word replay and you will have a chance of winning an essential stencil prize sometime in the 24 hours after the live goes live. Hi Mary, how are you today? From Kansas and Gloria's here, Emily's here. Alrighty, so exciting to see many people coming on. And I am doing a couple of projects today. One is uh, an upcycle project and another is a fun Irish sign for St. Patrick's Day. So who else celebrates St. Patrick's Day out there? If you can tell from my accent, I'm from Australia. And we um, celebrate some of the holidays, some we don't, the same as the USA, and some to not the same extent that you guys. I think you guys in the USA love your holidays and you love celebrating, which is so fun. I love it. Becca's here, Christy's here. So good to see you. Today I'm gonna to be doing an upcycle project on this pegboard. So it has a few pegs still in it. I'll take those out in a minute. Um, and they, the little pegs are in this carry, carry bag. So I'll pop them in there. And then I'm going to do a stencil background for the pegboard. So this could be used for, you know, notices or for hanging um, crafts. If you are an avid stenciler, maybe you could hang stencils on it. It would probably be like mini ones, I guess. You could pop a little... Oh, no, you couldn't. I'm just not sure how you would do that. You'd probably have to have a little hanger to be able to hang it. But um, hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. Elizabeth's here, joining from Massachusetts. More snowstorms over there and here it's, I don't know if you could hear, but it's raining. I've got the aircon on actually, cause it's quite hot, very humid, muggy. And so, um, and it's raining outside. So <clears throat> summer over here in Australia. Hi Kimberly. Thank you so much. Christy sprinkled, Pamela, hi. Karen's here from Illinois. Oh, I love that you're from all over the place, all over the USA. Now anything, any of the stencils um, I'm using today, you can um, use my code I Restore Stuff and get discounts. So um, you can get a 10% discount off anything from EssentialStencil.com of any of their main stencils. That will apply to the Irish, the St. Patrick's Day uh, stencils that I'll be using later on. Or you can get 50% off to the Stencil of the Month Club when you join um, for that first month. So let me have a look. We have. Grace's beautiful stencil of the month club stencil this month. She designed it. Grace is one of her other ambassadors and she designed this cute stencil collection. So it comes with a cute rabbit, which will be really fun for Easter, a lamb. Also, you know, Easter related, I guess, if you remember the, the Bible talks about Jesus is the lamb that sacrificed. Um, his life. So then there's the bee and a butterfly. Oh, I'm back to front here. Some cute spring related animals. So there comes with three stencils every month. If you join the stencil of the month club, you will see um, three stencils come to your mailbox. Then there's the optional add on, which I'll be using the add on today. And the add on is this gorgeous decorative pattern that you can use as a background for signs. You can see some great examples there. Used the background, always they always coordinate with these other stencils. So the other stencils that come with Grace's design are this gorgeous wreath and a cute bow at the top that you can add to your wreaths. Now all of these also are great with the um, rub-on transfers as well. So. Here's some other wreath designs that Grace has done with leaves. And then there's this flourish down the bottom. Can you see that flourish? That would be great using um, embossed paste. To, you can do that on furniture, all sorts of fun things, but also for your sign making. So that's the stencil of the month club. If you join using my code, I restore stuff, you can get 50% off your first month. I just wanted to remind you to, I brought these out because I am so dying to use these. Not sure if I can use them on the project today, but the, the rub on transfers, the spring flowers, absolutely gorgeous, can go with that stencil of the month club. 
design. So I'm going to use the add-on today to upcycle. If you've just joined me, I'm upcycling a board and I'm also going to do a fun, cute St. Patrick's Day sign. So stay tuned, stick with us and don't forget to stick around to the end and join in the conversation because Essential Stencil gives out prizes to three lucky winners at the end of our live. So I've got my board here and the add-on for the Stencil of the Month Club. Thank you, Peggy, so much for sprinkling. So if you hit that little share button and let your other DIY friends know, either via message or sharing it to your own Facebook page, that would be wonderful. If you know others who love to watch a little DIY crafting, maybe you are stenciling or crafting as I'm live here today. And that is always fun to see who's doing what. So let us know in the comments, what are you working on today? If you're working on a craft project while I'm live and you've got me on in the background, uh, let me know what you're working on today. Okay, so here is our pegboard and I'm just gonna take out these last, it just has these black pegs so you know you can hang things on the board. And um, it's just a plain pine board pegboard and I guess, you know, you could probably find these on Amazon or um, in your craft stores, in your office type stores, probably even Target has something like that. So just an e a simple pegboard. Now it does have hooks on the back to display it either this way or that way. It doesn't really matter for what we're doing on it today. I'm creating a patterned background. Let me see what people are saying that they're doing. I'd love to see. The stencil, yes, the rub-on transfers are so much fun. They're beautiful. Diana, I thought your stencil of the month club was here, but it was the mailman with another delivery. Well, I'm sure it's coming. Okay, so our stencil is, I'll let you know the size of these are always 16 by 12 inches. And my pegboard, as you can see here, the stencil, it's not gonna go right to the ends, but I think I'm going to just create this leave this border here and make my stencil go here and then here down the bottom now i'm going to try and do a super fast swirly whirly technique today that won't have me sitting here for ages uh, making it go and take too long um, because it's just a background we just want a nice light coat so let's have a look at how we can do this I'll point the camera down so we can see the project a bit more easily. And we'll look at some of our St. Patrick's Day fun signs later. Now I'm just going to use Fusion Mineral Paint. Um, it's a furniture paint the colour Paisley today. So I do have a, a link to my Amazon store that I could give you. Um, but the uh, this is a... It's a furniture paint, but it's acrylic based paint. And you can literally use any kind of craft paint on this. It doesn't have to be uh, the ones that we're using. Just something, I prefer a thick type of paint because then you can, um, it just goes on a lot. You get a better coverage, I feel like, is what I wanted to say. Sonia was painting backboards. Yes, getting ready to stencil. Oh, that's great. So I'll show you, I've just painted a little signboard that we're gonna be doing our St. Patrick's Day um, stencil on in just a minute. So we'll, we'll get to that in a little minute. But here's our board, we've got it ready and I've got my paint ready over here. Let's see if I can fit that in. I don't need to see it, but I wanna have some room here. Oops, <laughs> I've gotta see which way I'm going. Uh, to show you how I offload. So I'm going to use one of our largest essential stencil brushes. They come in a set of four. You can also get 50, um, sorry, 10% off these using my code, I restore stuff. It's always great to have a good a lot of brushes. So this one is the seven eighth inch brush, nice and wide. I'm just going to use what's in the lid of my brush right here. And I'm just wiping off the excess on the edge of the container. And what I want to do is offload the brush. I want to offload it a fair amount. Oops, what I haven't done is just put a bit of painter's tape, which you might want to do. Let me quickly just check on this. So I'm looking at the distance. We've got 
some of these pegboard dots all the way around up the top. I'm going to see if I added and moved this down here where it would come to. I think that's just about going to be perfect. So I will leave a little gap. So I'm leaving the space around here to create a bit of a border for our, for our sign. Oop. Adding a bit of painter's tape if you wanted to. Hi Donna, that's okay that you're joining late. No problem at all. You can always catch the replay if you miss anything, guys. So, but yeah, do join in the conversation and stick around to the end where we give out some prizes. Kimberly, yes, you can get Fusion Mineral Paint on their website. You, they've got a whole where to buy section. So you just look at your nearest retailer. I've also got some in my Amazon store that you can, my affiliate link there. So I've got about, you know, I've dried off my brush, offloaded it here. Let's see how much we get on here. Now I'm going to do a quick swirl method because I'm lay that down flat. To me, it's just going to be a background and I'm not too worried if I get super solid coverage. It's almost like a vintage kind of a look as if, I don't know, it's an old painted something or other that's just faded over time, I suppose you could say. Okay, so I've dipped my paint uh, brush in the paint again, but that's way too much paint because I can see it on the bristles. You want to wipe it off on the edge of your paint jar and then offload again onto your cardboard. It's just a bit of cardboard. I'm not going to paint my table. <laughs> I thought it would be quicker, but it's taking just a little bit. So I don't want to not have any. But see, I'd rather do thin layers and then, you know, add more paint onto my brush as I go than have too much on the brush and cause it to, let me move it down a bit, and cause it to have um, bleeding underneath the stencil because we don't want bleed through. So some of the pattern is larger and wider than others. Let me know too in your, um, oh, thanks Michelle. In the comments, let, let us know um, if you're brand new to stenciling and you've never stenciled before. I'd love to know who's willing to give it a go, who's ordered some stencils and a bit too scared to start. I say just go for it. Now, I always encourage people to practice on a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper. Practice on something that doesn't matter too much before you practice on your surface that you're going to paint onto. Thank you so much guys for sharing. I love it. Yes, this is the add-on for the month. If you've just joined us, I'm just going to stand up because then I can see a little more, more clearly. So this is the add-on for the Stencil of the Month Club for what month are we in? February. And designed by Grace, one of our ambassadors. And uh, her design is really cute. I showed a little bit of that at the beginning if you want to watch the replay again when we're finished. And I'm just doing a swirl, swirly motion. Not being too overly fussy about getting every single little detail covered. And as I go, I'm just dipping more paint into the container <coughs> onto my brush I mean and offloading it and hopefully we've got sort of an antique -y look now we've got the edge right here and I'll just show you how we can just join that pattern together of course you'll have things on the pegboard you know hanging from the pegboard. This is, if you've just joined me, this is a pegboard, as you can see with all the holes in it. And so you'll have things on there hanging. So it's just more like a background than anything. So I've just given it a rough swirling over. And let's have a little look at that. And this is the color Paisley from Fusion Mineral Paint. See how it's kind of got, 
a design there. The, the holes add an extra pattern, don't they? Um, but there's some faded bits and some solid bits. So there's a, a sort of a variation going on there. All right, so I want to lay that pattern back down onto the board. And so my pegboard is just a little, about an inch and a half longer than the actual pattern is within the stencil. <clears throat> and I'm going to try and see if I can line it up like I did on the top. And yes, it does sort of join. Let me see if it joins in this way. It may not join exactly. It's not like a repeating pattern type of thing. Um, but yes, you can just pop it. Whoop, I have to go this way a little bit, just making sure I've got these edges lined up. Because see how I've got a border of holes around here? It fits perfectly both ways if I do that. You will get sort of a join line type of thing here in the middle, but I'm okay with that. Because like I said before, it is a background. I think I've got it in the right place. Add that there. And now we're adding it, get it up to the top. All right, I'm back with you. Let me see your comments, see what we're doing while we're waiting. Carol said she painted a big a pegboard, like a teal color, and then stenciled a creamy white over that. Yeah, there's some great co color combinations that you can do. So I'm just doing this on a plain, um, it's a raw background. And so sometimes too, that's the thing to remember, when you're painting or stenciling over a painted surface, you will get a little bit of a, a different feel or a different result than when you paint, uh, you're stenciling on a raw timber surface. And raw timber surface is going to be more porous, so it's going to suck up a lot of the paint. So when I said earlier that I'm just going to do a quick swirl, it's actually a little bit longer than I thought because it's not a painted surface underneath, which would give you um, a lot quicker swirling action, I think. But I'm just going for a vintage vibe. So it'll just be something that's looking a bit faded. And after I've done this, I'm going to be working on St. Patrick's Day sign, because that's coming up in March, March the 17th, I believe. Did I get that right? March the 17th, St. Patrick's Day. There's quite a few St. Patrick's Day uh, stencils in the collection. Don't forget to use my code, I restore stuff, and you can get 10% off any of the stencils in Essential Stencils website, essentialstencil.com. Oh wow, someone's done, who was that? Carol, yeah, you said your pegboard was your first time stenciling. It's so good to just find, so this is an upcycle, this was just been hanging around our house for a while, and. I saw it leaning up because I was about to give it away. I was about to take it to the thrift shop. And I saw it yesterday and I thought, ah, I could do a stencil on that. So here we are. So yeah, look for things around your house. If you're new to stenciling, maybe there's you know, an old canvas or an old sign. You can just repaint that thing and then add a stencil. Paint it in a plain color, add a patterned background and then stencil over the top of it. So many different ideas. If you are looking for more ideas on what to stencil, the type of stencil techniques, um, the Stencil of the Month Club is a really great place to learn some of that stuff because if you join their Facebook group, you'll meet a whole bunch of like-minded crafters who love stenciling filled with inspirational ideas as they post their finished products or their in-process um, techniques up in the Facebook group. So if you wanted to use my code to join the Stencil of the Month Club, you can do that. Use my code iRestoreStuff and you can get 50% off your first month and get delivered a set of three stencils every month plus optional add-on. This is an add-on. So if you already ordered your Stencil of the Month Club, um, and you didn't get the add-on, I believe that this is still available in the Stencil of the Month Club shop. So Essential Stencil, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's right. Hello, who is that? Kristen just joined. Hey, how are you from Ohio? 
Yes, Sandy, I agree. Stenciling is great therapy. Great therapy. Any kind of painting. I paint furniture and you can see lots of my upcycled furniture on my blog, irestorestuff.com. Lots of uh, fun tips over there. If you're new to painting, I've got some painting tips that you can take advantage of. Talk about all the different types of furniture paints that there are available on the market. But yeah, the Stencil of the Month Club is where you'll find a lot of tips and techniques. The other place that you can look is right here on the Essential Stencil Facebook page. You go to the video section after you finish watching our live or anytime, go to their video tab and have a look at some of the other lives that we've done and the videos there. So they are organized into playlists of different ambassadors or different themes like Christmas, Valentine's, uh, that kind of thing. So. One last little spot here, and we finished this project, and I'll go on to my fun St. Patrick's Day sign. So I haven't worried about covering every single little space. So let's see how this join went. There we go. So that's the color Paisley from Fusion Mineral Paint. That's our background to our, and it's not too bad. Obviously, you can have some um, your pegs. I'll put the pegs back in. The other reason why we don't have very much on our brush, especially, can you imagine swirling with that stenciling technique? And if the if it ran over a hole, you'd be running it into the hole as well. So that's another reason um, why. But let me just point that back so you can kind of get the bigger picture over here. So you can see the background. Um, there is a fun, it's a paisley kind of finish, isn't it? It's interesting. I didn't think about the fact that the color of the paint I'm using is called paisley and it's a paisley kind of design. All right, if I was gonna be using this paintbrush again for another project, I would put it in a plastic bag, but um, because I'm not going to be using this one again, I'll just put it in some water so that it can clean itself. So that's one idea for an upcycle. I hope you liked that one. And of course, to clean our stencil off, I'll do that in a minute, but it is good to wipe it off right away. And don't forget to clean the backs of them too. <coughs> um, that's that. All right, so now is my fun sign, but this is my cardboard that's kind of got mess all over it. So just ignore that. Okay, I've got a fun couple of boards here that I just joined together with these. They're not hinges. Ah, oh, I forget what you call them. It's like a bit of a brace. So it's just a piece of metal and it has four screw holes in it. I'm not sure if you can get ones with just two, but it helps to join two boards together. So these were actually pallet boards from an old pallet and joined together with those two metal brackets. So I could put another two uh, screws in the center holes, but I just put two screws in here, two in here, and it, it's not moving anywhere, it's really solid. Then I added a little hook to the back. So if you have scrap wood lying around, you could make your own sign boards. Just saw them to the right length, and there you go. And I've painted the front of this in just a plaster color, and it's just an off-white, creamy off-white color. <coughs> Elizabeth's giving tips for just getting yourself going with stenciling. That's good, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Yep, just sit yourself down with your cardboard paper, whatever you have. And practice. That's the only way to learn. True. Don't be intimidated. Okay, so here is the next stencil set that I wanted to show you today. And um, Essential Stencil with will pop a link to this one in there. There are so many fun uh, St. Patrick's Day stencils. This is the one I'm going to be using, but I just want to show you really quickly some other ones that are new as well as other years. But if you look up um, Patrick on the Essential Stencil website or Lucky or um, something like that, you will find. So this is a, uh, what do you call that? A porch leaner. It's got St. Patrick's Day on the porch leaner. There's also the cute happy St. Patrick's Day what's it called clover vintage truck is the name of this one look at all those fun cute clovers on the back with fresh picked clovers open daily and on the back this is a two-pack set happy St. Patrick's Day so there's a few 
fun St. Patrick's Day things. This is a six pack set and it's called The Luckiest. So for this one, you'll just have to look up the word lucky or I do have the links in the description of the live, wherever your description is. After you finish watching the live, you can go there, click on that. It'll take you straight to the link for this stencil um, and essential stencil probably also put that in the um, pinned comments right there too. So that, it's a six pack set. It's called The Luckiest. And here are some of the fun stencils inside it. I'll use one of their black cardboards to be my background. So we've got Lucky and Blessed, very cute. We've got a couple of four leaf clovers on here. And this gorgeous checkered plaid, buffalo check clover, four leaf clover. Irish kisses and shamrock wishes, how fun. Carol said, you've got these, have you? That's awesome. Hi, Dana. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, Sherry said uh, she worries about the part where they join together. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Yeah, and it, this is kind of more of a rustic farmhousey kind of look, um, having those joined boards that you can still stencil over and, and uh, there's not really a big gap in between. The luckiest. And then we've got a gorgeous jar, mason jar filled with clovers and this is one that we're going to use just now, just a wee bit Irish. Let me know, oh that was my best Irish accent, just a wee bit Irish. I should have rolled my R a little more. <laughs> but that is, um, these are cute signs aren't they? They're so cute for St Patrick's Day. So who do you know? Maybe you could tag a friend who is just a wee bit Irish. Maybe you could take a friend or share it with them, share our live today. Now, the two that I'm going to use today on this board are these two. But instead of putting them side by side like, like this, and I know that I did put my hook on the back here, but I can change that quite easily. It's just screwed in. I'm going to unscrew it and I'm going to do it um, this way, long ways, up and down. So I'm going to put Irish sign up there and the mason jar might add a few more clovers in it so let's get oops i've got that upside down let's get started with that one but first um i'm gonna make a green well we've got this pressed fern maybe i'll just leave it that dark i like the dark green i was going to just add a touch of white so i can i don't know how many irish people <laughs> Someone said, I like your natural accent. That's my Australian accent. Isn't it funny how the country that we're from, we don't think we have the accent. Um, but yeah, my Irish accent. <laughs> they are very cute. There you go. There you go. Essential stencils pinned that uh, right there, that comment, so that you can see exactly where to get this stencil from. I'm going to add the stencil at the top. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to tape over these little splashes. See these splashes out the side here? So that instead of making it round looking, I'm just going to do without those and it sort of gives it that more vertical style. You can keep them on if you want to, but just for this one, I'm going to just tape those up. And you just add a bit of blue painter's tape so that your paintbrush doesn't accidentally splash over onto the splashes. Oh, Pam says she just put those two colours in a cart <laughs> for my life. That's funny. All right, so here's our first one. I am just going to use this colour green. This is our three quarter inch brush. And I could use that one. I might use it a little bit smaller, five eighth inch. Let's go with this one. So these brushes, I said before, come in a set of four. And of course we have to use green. We could um, use, yeah, Tina says it looks similar to a Kelly green, which is really popular St. Patty's Day color. Great. Well, I'm going to go with it. I was going to add a bit of white to kind of make it a bit lighter green, but I think we'll just go with this dark green. And so, of course, we've got our color on the, br on the brush, but we want to offload that a bit more. So I'm just going to offload that right here, work it into the bristles. This is all dried paint, by the way, on my cardboard here from weeks and weeks ago got some practice stencil designs. See, it's just a, a box and you open it up and you can practice your stencil ideas on it. This time I'm not going to use my painter's tape. I'm just going to leave that there and do a super quick job of going over this. Now, once again, adding my brush. Oh yeah, I like the brightness of that green. I do like that. 
I was thinking it was going to be too dark, but it's actually turned out beautifully, just like this. I've got a little Irish hat on this one. Did we have anyone in the in the chat watching who is Irish or part Irish? Maybe you're just a wee bit Irish, like the sign says here. This would be a cute. Um, oh, someone is a little bit Irish. <laughs> I'd love to see if you're Irish here today. Hey, let us know. And also guys, hang around because at the end we give away prizes. So three lucky winners will be receiving an essential stencil prize. And if you're watching the replay in the next 24 hours, you might even be watching now and then watching the replay again later. If you comment the word replay during the replay, um, you could win a prize there too, 24 hours after our live. Okay, Debbie, are you half Irish? Woohoo! Elizabeth, lots Irish, grandparents straight from Ireland. And Jane is Scottish, English and Irish. Awesome. I love that we're all from so many different heritages. Whoops. I felt like that was just a little bit too much on my brush that time. You can see that that green is slightly more solid than the other. I'm just doing it on a creamy background. And then I want to show you once this is dried. Oh, maybe I might not be able to do that. I forgot to bring my hairdryer out to dry it off. I was going to add an antiquing wax to this, but it may not dry in time. Isn't that cute? Just a wee bit Irish. That is so sweet. And you can see the green. It doesn't look too dark. It's a gorgeous color green. So I'm going to put, make sure that the base, let me just pop this down a bit further so we can see better. Uh, the base of my jar, so here's my jar. I want the base to have about as much gap below it as I have at the top here. Just when you're making your signs, always make sure you've got some room at the sides. So the jar finishes here within the stencil. So I'm just going to have a eyeball it Put that about there and that gives us a little bit of space in between to add some extra clovers that might come out of here so let's pop these on it is the perfect green color yeah thank you guys pop this here yes and it does work out great patty even with that joining of the two boards it doesn't matter that you can see a little bit there of the join it's all a part of that rustic vintage look Yes, Teresa, yeah, I was saying that um, I have the hanging hook here on the side, but I can easily change that, unscrew it, and I'll be putting it at the top here. Or I can also put one of those, you know, alligator, I think they're called alligator, not alligator clip, it's a hanger that's got little teeth on it. <laughs> I think you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Thank you, Karen. Yes, Rhonda, I love this green too, it's a gorgeous color. Oh, Carla's got Scottish, German, English. Amazing. Uh, the paint brand I'm using is Fusion Mineral Paint, Jody, and it's the, the pressed fern color. So I do have an Amazon link for the Fusion Paint if you wanted to, or you can just look up fusionmineralpaint.com and whoop, we've got a star out the side here. I was thinking I would leave the stars off, but it doesn't matter. You could cover, tape the tape tape up anything that you don't want to uh, paint on your stencil design like I did up here I left those splashes off and I'm going to show you how you can mix and match different stencils offloading the brush now this oh that's a lot on there I'm just dabbing because I can see that I've got a lot on my brush right here and if you've got too much on your brush just want to dab it a little bit on those really big spaces but when you get to the tiny ones now I've offloaded a lot because I don't want that bleeding underneath okay so here we go now I've, now my brush is fairly clean I want to stay away from this edge too see that looks like I could accidentally run over the top of the edge so what it here's a top tip is to add your tape down to the bottom so that you don't accidentally get your brush over the edge. Oops, need a bit more. 
now we can go over it nicely with our circular round motion. I just had a wee bit too much on my brush. And that's why you practice, guys. That's why you practice, practice, practice on your piece of cardboard or your paper. There we go. Ha! Our gorgeous, just a wee bit Irish sign with our jar. Now I want to add some clovers coming out. Now those are three leaf clovers. Let's find, I know I saw one of the, so if you've just joined us, we're using this six pack set here of um, St. Patrick's Day themed stencils. And I saw one in here that had, we've got the luckiest, this one, we've got this, that is a four leaf clover. Here it is. This is the one I was thinking of. See how it's got these cute four leaf clovers with little swirly bits on them. So I wanted to try and use those today to make them come out of the jar using those swirly bits. So let's have a look. What you want to do is tape off. I don't want the word on. I just want from here around. Whoop. I'm trying to see what you can see. So I don't want the word lucky. I just want from here on. So I'm going to tape over the word, uh, the letter Y, and I want to make sure that I'm only stenciling from here around onto the clover. Oh, Connie, I like the cute emojis. That is so cute. The green and the little four leaf clovers. That's awesome. Yes, St. Patrick's Day theme today. All right, so I'm going to make it sort of appear like the the clover is hanging out of the jar. In fact, I'm going to cover over that little star that's right there coming out, maybe. No, I'll leave it up. It's probably a little bit close to that star, but that's okay. All right, so offloading my brush. <laughs> okay, and I've just noticed right before I before I apply the stencil, this edge is a little bit close to the stencil, so I don't want to be painting that. This will also help me keep it in place. So, all right, here we go. Starting with my four leaf clover in the shapes of little hearts. You could also do these, well, you couldn't really do them in a different color. You could do the jar in a different color if you wanted to tape off all the jar. So there's one. How does that look? See, I didn't try this before. I didn't practice, um, but there you go. There's a little bit of a clover coming out of the jar. <laughs> Is that cute? Fun idea. Kathy, yeah, it looks great. You've inspired me to get some St. Patrick's <laughs> stencils. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Um, and yeah, just make sure you use my code. You'll get your 10% off anything in the essentialstencil.com site. Christine says it takes me forever to find emojis. Yes, true. There's almost like the perfect emoji for every situation these days. Okay, so this one has a little curl tail on it as well. You could even mix and match your curly tails. You could flip this one over and do it the other way. Uh, all sorts of fun ideas. So I'm going to just add this one here and I want to tape the edge so that it doesn't move but I also want to tape this letter B for blessed so that I don't accidentally paint that either. Now I think that I have enough on my brush because I felt like I had a lot there. I'm going to put my finger over this and hopefully not go anywhere near it. Yes and I do see I didn't even dip the paint brush back into the jar. I've still got plenty on the brush which means I probably didn't offload it as much as I could have but it didn't create any fuzzy edges, so we're all good. Sometimes you just learn about how much to put on the brush and how much not to put on, so. All right, so there's the second one. Isn't that cute? And I feel like we need one more in the center, don't we? <clears throat> so I could use that. This one seemed to have a longer stem on it. What I could do is add, add the actual um, clover where I want it and then try and make the stem go a different way. Okay, are you with me? So I'm just going to 
put this over here and I'm going to try just do the clover and create a stem that goes into the jar all right so bear with me so we've got our clover there's just a tinsy little bit of uh, stem showing right here and so oh, actually I might move it around so that that points downwards and then it won't matter round about up here because I want it clover to sit sort of here and then we'll just make that stem go down a bit further all right I'm just going to test out my brush right here and see if I do have enough on my brush it's still got more paint on the brush see I haven't even added more to it yet so we do have a lot more there and the more I go around it the fuller or the better the coverage goes so just keep doing that for a little bit maybe just a tad more but I won't dip it into the paint I'll just go where I was over here on the cardboard and see if there's enough to add oh maybe not I'm gonna have to do it I'm gonna have to dip it in but I don't want too much okay here it is here so now I just have to create a stem to go down into the jar Yes, thank you, Rhonda. Yeah, you can use my code iRestoreStuff to um, join the Stencil of the Month Club and you get your first month, 50% off your first month um, in the club. So it's great value. All right, so let me see if I can create a stem. Oh, it's going to be a little tricky. I feel like there's wide bits, narrow bits. Oh, guys, how am I going to do this? <laughs> I don't know what I've done now. Um, and let me see if there's other stems. No, I'm out of luck being... <laughs> oh, hang on, like, could be another one here. Oh, here, yeah, this could be a little stem too, you know. Probably not quite long enough. Well, let's see. Let's see, guys. I think I'm onto something. I've just picked another stencil out of the pack. We improvise. Okay, so I'm taping off here. We've got a tiny little swirl at the end of a word that I'm creating a stem with. See how we do this? You just play around with those stencils. You can come up with all sorts of things. I'm going to have to make it longer, but bear with me. Offloading our brush. See how it turns out. Ooh. Okay, can you tell I'm nervous? Not sure how it's going to turn out. Okay, it's getting there, so it's going down. <laughs> I think I, I've accidentally put that little stem there now too. And I can probably make that just go a little bit further down here and join it to the jar right about there. I, I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit hard to see. I'm just creating a stem and by moving it down a slightly, a little bit further, it just reaches the jar. So I do need to tape off the part that's already been painted. Let's do that with this little piece because that curls in a different direction. And we'll see if we can get that really solid. Let's reach the jar. Oh. Can you even tell? Now I just have one little part here where it was going to be a stem. So that's a little boo-boo, but from a distance you can't really tell. I could just paint over that or get a bit of sandpaper and sand that off. So there we go. There's our just a wee bit Irish sign. And um, let's see, I feel like that's dry enough where I could show you that antiquing technique if you were interested using some antiquing wax on the over, overall of this, you can create a fun, um, just a rustic finish to it, a little bit more rustic than what it is. You could also get a bit of sandpaper and use that to just distress these letters a bit to not make the green so um, solid and bright. That's a fun idea as well. Let's see if I've got my sanding paper here. So pop that into the, a plastic bag, perhaps, just in case, or a wet cloth, 
sometimes just wrap that in a wet cloth just in case I need to do some with that green in a minute. You're so welcome, Patty. And I'm going to get my antiquing wax. Now this is some fusion wax, but you've all sorts of furniture waxes. There's different types of um, black wax, white wax, clear wax, antiquing wax is what I'm using today. I'm just going to use a wax brush and add a bit to my brush and that will sit. I don't know if you can see, this is such a rustic piece of wood, but it's got some, you know, sawing lines and grain in there. So the waxes kind of sits in the grain and gives it a whole new feel. And I really feel like that's dry enough, but I would, if I was you, leave it till it dries a lot longer. But let me just gently, very, very gently with like a 400 grit sandpaper or more. I'll see if you can tell a slight difference and even in that line in the center you're almost accentuating that line so if you can see on this side it just slightly distressed the lettering and I haven't done so on this side yet so you can sort of see how that just slightly distresses watch the hat light distressing Gives it an old feel. And again for the jar, just a super quick distress. Then we're gonna go over it with some antiquing wax to give it an old world feel. I didn't bring my cloth. I don't wanna use my, um, if you did have a microfiber cloth to just dust, wipe that dust off, that would be ideal. So you could distress it as much or as little as you want right there, but you can see just a very faint line of the color, cream color peeking through. Now I wanna get my wax brush and get a bit of wax on the edge of it. Oh, this wax brush is a little bit <laughs> large for this. Oh, and I didn't bring my, my um, cloth to give it a good rub so I'm going to just have to find bear with me I'm still here somewhere in the background <laughs> trying to find my clock here so I can wipe away the excess of the antiquing wax so you just need sort of a, a chucks cloth or um, a shop cloth and I've got that on the brush so now I'm going to go and I'll show you what it looks like when you go in the grain of the wood now don't freak out just yet <laughs> but you can see the grain right here showing through so what I'm doing is I'm adding that I'll add it to the whole sign but I just want to show you what it looks like just on one section of it to get that antique look and you wipe off the excess this is a dry cloth so I'm wiping off the excess and then the antiquing wax sits in the grain of the wood so there we go it's a closer look for you to show you what that looks like. So we'll do that again and I'll do it over the whole lot this time. So we've got our antiquing wax, you just dip it in, then you wipe off the excess and then buff it to finish. So if you've just joined, you can watch the replay of how we repurposed, and I'll show you that in a minute, repurposed a pegboard and used a fun pattern to create a background on it. And this is super quick to just add the antiquing wax Get it into all those grooves, then remove the excess. Um, and my second project is this one right here that we did today. Oop, that's a lot of a lot of wax. Sits into the grain. And this one we used the six pack called the Luckiest. I always do the edges as well to get them looking antiqued. Give it a vintage feel. All waxed. So you always wax before you do, I mean after, sorry, after you do your stencil because the paint is a water-based paint. Wax is wax and wax will resist any water, won't it? So we have to make sure that we do, waxing is our last step. So you can see there's grooves in the wood here, all sorts of grain that really makes that stand out nicely. Don't forget to wipe off the excess from your edges. And 
And now it's a really nice, fun, rustic sign ready for St. Patrick's Day. Thanks to all our Irish friends who've been watching, because if you've just joined we're in the comments, we're seeing who's Irish? Who's a wee bit Irish? Because our sign says, just a wee bit Irish. I think that's so cute for anyone who has some Irish heritage. Be so proud of your heritage, people. <laughs> all right, here's our other project we worked on today, and we are about to pick some prize winners. So thank you guys so much for watching today. Here's the background that we did using the pattern from the Stencil of the Month Club which you can join using my code irestorestuff and you get 50% off your first month. All the details are right there at, at the links in the description of the live. And we did our just a wee bit Irish cute little sign ready for St. Patrick's Day. There's lots of fun St. Patrick's Day stencils in there as well. So use my code irestorestuff to get your 10% uh, off all your stencil orders. That includes brushes, um, wood, it includes the beautiful rub-on transfers that I was showing you before. There's spring ones, there's um, winter, there's um, sunflowers, all sorts of fun designs there. Let me see if we got our winners. Uh, I think I might have missed it. There we are. Winners today, we've got Bonnie, Laurie and Cheryl. Congratulations, you guys. Bonnie, Laurie and Cheryl, congratulations. Uh, send the email there. They've tagged you in that pinned comment so you can claim your prizes. And I'm Sharon from the blog, I Restore Stuff. I would love to see you over on my Facebook page or Instagram, YouTube channel where I have lots of tutorials there if you're new to crafting, painting, furniture, that kind of thing. Or jump over onto my blog and you'll find lots of fun tips at irestorestuff.com. I will see you next week. Thank you so much for joining me today. Bye. <laughs>